Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and this is a video tutorial helping you getting started with Windows Subsystem for Linux WSL version 2. So let's dive in, let's just go ahead and get after it. I think that's the best way to do it. Let's not waste any time. I'm gonna fire up Chrome. I'm gonna use my web browser here, just Google Chrome. Uh, that's kind of what I've been using lately. And I'm already on Google, so I don't have to go to google.com. But typically, when you want something on your computer, on the internet, you just have to search for what you want. So let's look at WSL2 Windows 10. Simply all we need to search for, and it looks like I have a result here. Let's install the Windows subsystem for Linux WSL on Windows 10 with the Microsoft documentation here, docs.microsoft.com, because I think that's the best source. Let's go for the real documentation. So this explains to us, if we want to install the Windows subsystem for Linux, what we have to do is we have to turn on some of these optional features on Windows 10. Now, you can do this with the graphical user interface if you were to simply go and type in like, okay, uh, Windows features, it gives you turn Windows features on and off through your control panel. That's an option. It also explains you can just run these simple commands that will go ahead and do that right for you. It says open PowerShell as administrator and run this command. So we could copy this with that copy button there or just select all of it. Copy however you'd like to. I'm using control C because I like to use those keyboard hotkeys. And now, as it said, we could open PowerShell as the administrator and run that. The way that you could do this, if you just type it in in your start menu, you'll have an option here, run as administrator. If you right click it, there's an option, run as administrator. Again, if you're kind of a keyboard junkie, you could do control shift enter, and then it will prompt you for whatever you particularly want to run as administrator. Now note here, you could be opening this in PowerShell or cmd.exe, again, as administrator. I just simply type in cmd there. Note that we're using a DSIM, excuse me, DISM.exe. So this is going to be an old school CMD.exe like program that we're using. It's not a Windows PowerShell commandlet, right? It doesn't exactly matter what we're in, but PowerShell is totally fine to use. Let me close out of that and I'll open PowerShell just because, I don't know, that's what we should be using these days. Let me actually amp that text up. So I'll go into properties here, move that font to something that you can actually see. Amazing, okay. Now we could just simply run that command that we copied. Uh, you could right click to paste it in, you could shift and press insert to paste it in, but once that is all displayed in the command line, let's go ahead and hit enter on that and it will take effect, right? It'll enable those features and we can hit the I believe button. That's really all we need. Before we move on, that explains, okay, we just set it up for WSL version one. Now, what we're doing is we're gonna be setting up WSL version two. WSL version two is a little bit better because it's using a real virtualization layer and Windows 10 is packaged essentially with a Linux kernel that allows us to kind of natively run Linux applications, which is super cool. But that means we have to have a little bit of recent mainstream up-to-date stuff. This says you need to make sure that you are running Windows 10 updated to version 2004, build 1904 or higher. The way you could determine that is by simply running a Windows command. And they specify, you could do this with kind of the run dialog box. If you press the Windows key and R, you can type in WinVer or W-I-N-V-E-R. Hit okay, hit enter, whatever you want, and it'll tell you that version number right there. If your build is lower than that, you will have to upgrade, update Windows, do whatever you got to do. Um, from what I understand, this has been troubling. It has been troublesome trying to get it to upgrade and update. Uh, in a previous version, you might have to do a manual install, but you could do the media creation tool that Windows ships with and get the proper version that you need. So, okay. Now we want to enable the virtual machine platform. Again, another optional feature or component, and we're gonna end up running a same command at DISM and then enabling the specific feature. Let's copy this guy. And again, I will hop over to my PowerShell window and I will use shift insert to paste that in. Simply run that, slap that in, and now that operation has completed successfully and we're done, easy enough. But we're running Windows. So anytime we make a specific unique tweak and change, we will have to simply restart our computer to complete that WSL installation. 
I've done that, right? I'm running WSL2 already. So if you are doing this for the first time, I'll see you in a little bit. Please do restart your computer. Thanks. Okay. Now let's get back to what we're working with here. Set WSL2 as your default version. So because we've installed WSL, it could very well be using WSL version one or WSL version two. Uh, if you want to specify what version you run as the default, you have the capability to interact with this utility, WSL, as its own command, right? As something that you can interface with on the command line. You could simply pass an argument. Let's set the default version to number two. Let's go ahead and do this. I apparently killed my PowerShell window, so let's fire that back up. If I were to simply run WSL set default version, so two hyphens to start, and then hyphens in between each word there, set default version two, and it says for information on key differences with WSL2, please visit this location. Gotcha. Good enough. I'm pretty sure that's good. In our case, this guide explains to us, you might see this message after running that command. WSL requires an update to its kernel component. For information, please visit this link here. Okay, so if we do get that message, and you might while you're setting this up for the very first time, we should go ahead and kind of work with that. So let's go to that link, open another tab, and it says we need to update our WSL2 Linux kernel. Manually do this, go ahead and install it. Looks like we have to download the Linux kernel update package. This says, please download the latest WSL2 kernel update package for these machines. If I click on that, it'll simply grab an MSI or little Microsoft installer file. I will click on that as well. And you will be prompted with this kind of Linux Tux looking like dialog box, a classic installer where you'll slam next and finish a bunch until you have everything installed. And that's really all you need to do. That's all that the Windows kernel, or excuse me, Linux kernel will need to be set up for WSL2. Uh, because I already have this set up, it's not going to particularly play nice with me. That's totally fine. I trust that you can click next through an installer as you've done many times before on Windows. Let's get back to our original guide here. And now we are working with WSL, WSL. Uh, one thing that I should have mentioned when we were looking at this WSL command is that you can use tac tac help and that will display a little bit more options of what we can really do with this tool, with this command line, with this command, right? If no command line is provided, it will automatically launch the default shell or whatever version of Linux that you happen to have installed and you're working with on your Windows 10 installation, right? You could check out a, spe a specific distribution. You could run as a specific user you could import or list or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the ones that are running and you might have multiple distributions installed. Right now we don't have any. So let's go ahead and go get a Linux distribution that we particularly like. We can open the Microsoft store and then go track down our favorite Linux distributions. Right now it ships with a decent amount. You can choose whatever you would like. Personally, I'm an Ubuntu guy, so I am always going for Ubuntu 2004. And let's do that. If I were to open up the Microsoft store, I have a typo there. That'll open up here. We could simply search for the distribution that we're looking for. You could type in Ubuntu. And once you search for it, Okay, great, you can see all these apps. You'll have maybe Ubuntu without a name or a version number, 1804, 2004, and let's click on him. I like 2004. It is free, noted, and we could simply get that. Easy enough, right? Once you have gotten that, you can simply install, click on that, and it'll go ahead and install. It takes a little bit of time to download it, but hey, it works just, just fine. Then it's done. Great. And it says, it just got installed. My face is in the way. Let's see if I can make that go away. We just got installed. Let's go ahead and check it out. If I hit launch there, it'll say, I'm installing. This might take a few minutes. Let me amp up that text again so you can see it. Okay, great. This says, hey, please create a default Unix user account. It does not need to match your current Windows username. Let me turn my face back on. Alrighty. 
enter a new Unix username. And this doesn't have to be, as it said, the one that's actually on your Windows 10 machine. You could have it be whatever you particularly like. I tend to like it to match my name. So I'll just type in John and I will need a password. So I will use a super secure password just for the sake of demonstration. And now we boot it up. We're kind of logged in to Linux, right? All within our Windows 10 system. So this is pretty cool because it opens the doors for all of our regular Linux-like development and work that we might do still on Windows. So we can get a little bit of the best of both worlds. I had to switch to Windows. I didn't have to switch to Windows, but I've been doing this because I want a little bit better look in the video, right? Because so I'm using this new camera and I've got a little bit more stable video editing and I want to do just some stuff with it. So that is why I kind of wanted to get some more Windows and Linux stuff mixed in. I'm running WSL2 and that is how I set it up. That is how I got at least a simple command line running and ready for me. So if you wanted to, let me just hit the start button again, type in WSL, we'll run that. And now you can see that I am, let me zoom in, sorry. Big font. I think that's good enough for you, I hope so. I could run specific commands. Check out the present working directory I'm in. Check out who I am I, ID, et cetera, et cetera. And I can move around inside of a Linux file system. Interesting thing, right? I am currently in my Linux file system, but over in slash MNT is where Windows and the Windows file system is mounted, right? So I could hop over to the C drive and check out, oh, these are all the files and folders that will be actually part of my Windows installation, that Windows file system. And I can kind of move back and forth between Linux and Windows, which is handy, right? Or if I need to open up an application, I could run explorer.exe and now I'm gonna open up Windows Explorer in that directory. Let me add a period to note. Okay, let's fire that up in home, John. You'll note here in the uh, location bar and the navigation bar, I'm, it almost looks like I'm in a network share, right? It's two backslashes, WSL and a dollar sign. So you could use that to actually get yourself into the Linux file system whenever you're kind of navigating through a file open dialog or you're working with an Explorer. So that is handy and you can start up anything else you might like. So because you can access that mount C drive, maybe you can get into program files. Let me get into, oops, sorry, that's screaming at you. I will mute that. We have Sublime Text. Is that in x64 bit? Okay, no, it's not. x86. Wow, that is <laughs> not happy with me trying to tab complete some stuff. Subble.exe. And now I've fired up Sublime Text over in another window. I'll show that here for you. Great. Integration between Windows and Linux, all with WSL version two. And I think it's really nice. I have been using that lately and I hope you guys get a little bit of use out of it. So you aren't beating yourself up or you're banging your head against the wall because maybe you are forced to use Windows or you're trapped in Windows. And you just have to do it in your work environment, but you still need to dev man, you still need to get some work done and you just prefer to be in Linux, WSL2 can help make that happen. I'd like to do a little bit more where I showcase the Windows terminal. I'd like to do a little bit more where I showcase Docker in Windows so you can really do some good stuff. Maybe you can kind of prepare for some capsule flag events or do some pen testing, do some ethical hacking, crazy, crazy cool stuff. But that is it, everyone. How are we doing? Way too long of a video, almost 15 minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you did like this video, please do do those YouTube algorithm things. I would love it if you could maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel, drop a like, leave a comment, write some stuff and hit enter. I'm grateful for the engagement. So thanks again for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Take care.